Hey guys, Brandon here, and it is the middle of winter. It's three degrees Fahrenheit this morning, a little bit of snow, and during this recent cold snap, uh, some areas that have had negative temperatures have had some issues charging. So um, I'm gonna take my Model X after sitting outside in the freezing temps. It actually got below zero earlier um, to, uh, last night, um, but again, right now it's three degrees. So I'm gonna take this um, bricked, uh, cold, super cold battery, and we're gonna go plug it into a local supercharger. Um, in order to do this test, I am not gonna use climate control, so it's gonna be really cold inside the cabin right now. The vehicle says it's four degrees out, um, so it's probably four degrees in here. I am gonna have the seat heater and the steering wheel heater on, but I'm not using climate, and I'm not gonna tell the car that we're going to the charger station. Normally with Trip Planner, if you have if, you, if, if the system will know you're going to a um, supercharger and it will actually start warming the battery to a better temperature, even like 30 to 40 minutes beforehand. So we're not gonna do that because we wanna see what happens with a cold battery. So here we go. So the snowflake icon is on in the battery. So it recognizes that it's super cold. On our way, I have almost no uh, regen, again, because the battery is so cold so yeah if i let off the accelerator i'm basically just coasting um yeah chilly very chilly i am sporting our new uh nokian hakapalita r5 snow tires which are really great don't really need them right now when the snow is really crunchy and firm and the roads are dry like this so but sure it was nice to have them when we had the deep freeze so it should be at the supercharger pretty soon now <clears throat> model s's and x's uh, like my x have uh, dedicated resistive heater systems for the battery so that it can maintain the temperature uh, in cold weather model y and model 3 do not um, they have a heat pump they don't have a dedicated <coughs> heater for the um, battery it's all kind of mixed into one system so if the cabin needs heat, then the battery is getting less heat. But what it can do in extreme temperatures is it can actually spin the motors. The um, electric motors actually gen generate quite a bit of heat. And it can spin the motors and generate um, a little bit of heat to assist the, uh, the heat pump. Um, all right, so here we are at the supercharger. Probably not a lot of people out. Oh, there is one car charging. So let's get to a stall. It's now saying 10 degrees out. I don't know if that's accurate or not. Supercharger was not that far away. So here's one of the problems with superchargers. <clears throat> is the cables don't stay up on this little, there's a little tiny notch that is just supposed to hook into there and it doesn't always keep the supercharger uh, cable. All right, cleared out a little bit of snow with the bobby pin. Um, I was able to push it in enough that I heard the little latch lock, um, which again, in the car, there's a little notch like that that pokes up into the handle here. Oh, we've got a green light. Let's see. Batter oh, just missed the, uh, the alert. Battery, um, battery is warming up. Oh. And now, okay, now it's saying supercharger. It kind of threw an error there at first. Yeah, so I'm getting zero kilowatts. That's interesting. Battery is heating, keep charge cable inserted. Charge rate will increase once battery is warm. Yeah, so uh, basically that's what happens when you try to uh, supercharge a, a brick cold um, battery is that it needs to that it needs to heat. Um, now, one of the reasons this is not that big of an issue most of the time is um, one, the supercharger, uh, superchargers almost always work. And this most recent cold snap um, in Colorado and in Chicago, there were some <clears throat> superchargers that were actually not working at the, at the 
at the cable side at, at the um as i say pump side but um and so that was kind of a problem there was sometimes if there's moisture inside there and then the cold drops too fast before the uh, insides can kind of dry out due to the cold dry weather then you get some issues with the electronics um <clears throat> So there were some charging stalls, but that didn't work. But one of the, the reasons this doesn't happen that often, even in really cold temperatures, is that um, Teslas usually aren't this cold when they get to a supercharger. First of all, if you have trip planner glowing, it's gonna preheat the battery now. They've had that feature for a couple years now, and it's gonna make sure it's not like sub-freezing and way too cold to charge. And then the other thing is, oh, we're getting four kilowatts now. Um, but zero miles per hour, so that means it's using four kilowatts to heat the battery. Um, the other thing is that um, when you're, you, most people are driving to a supercharger on, like after they've been driving for a while and the, and the battery's down. So in that case, um, just the battery discharging, well, first of all, you might have started with a warm battery from a garage or, or warmer battery, but also just the discharging of energy from the battery creates heat and that heats the battery also the motors are creating heat the car can use that heat um, to keep the battery warm and then of course um, it can it knows the temperature of the battery so even without trip planner it can shunt heat to the battery um, so that it's an ideal temperature even just for driving so there's a lot of reasons that this is not an issue most of the time with superchargers but it was oddly um, it did oddly become an issue this time so we've been plugged in for a couple minutes and now it's showing four kilowatts being used as heat. Um, and then, well, I'm assuming it's being heat and it's saying the battery's being heated. Um, and then we're getting zero miles per hour because none of that electricity is going into the battery as charge power. Um, and it's still saying it's starting to charge. So pretty interesting. Um, I am now gonna turn on the climate heat because why not let's get all the heaters going here so this is kind of a problem for um, for generalized supercharger use because I mean this just slows everything down so it just play this out with a lot of people doing this so the people that come to charge and are plugged in now it's gonna take forever uh, because, uh, ooh, now we're up to eight kilowatt hours. Still not, still not getting any charge into the battery though. Wow, eight kilowatts, not kilowatt hours, eight kilowatts, um, just for the heating purposes. That's some high powered heating equipment. Anyway, fill up a supercharger station with uh, really cold batteries. Now everybody has to wait for them to warm up and then they have to wait for them to charge. And then, you know, that could be like, 45 minutes. Now the cars that are in line, uh, if they didn't have enough electricity to power to like, you know, keep the heaters and stuff going, which that'd be unusual. But anyway, they're out there in the cold and the wind just sitting there not charging and not using their motors because they're, uh, they're stationary and the battery is not discharging much, creating extra heat. So those are now getting colder. And then when they finally get the charge, now they have to heat up and waste more time. And so there's just, there can be a cascade of events where things just don't go very well. Kind of like if you have rain and then you have a freezing episode and then you know um gas handle gas pump handles are like frozen shut or something like that um, all kinds of weird stuff can happen with gas cars and with electric cars and uh, crazy crazy low um, temperatures one more this is so it's now at 11 kilowatts wow and still nothing going into the battery for range or charging 12 kilowatts man the difference is i did turn on my heater and so that must be a really powerful heater that's that's amazing 12 kilowatts um battery is heating i'm debating whether i want to stay here I don't think I, I, this could take, um, I know uh, out of spec, it's Kyle Connor did, uh, or Kyle Connor did a test with his Model 3 a year ago, and it took his Model 3 like 30 or 40 minutes, I think, before it started taking a charge, um, and I don't want to wait.
wait that long. Ooh, we're now up to 13 kilowatts. So anyway, so the charging does work, um, but it does this if you're at these odd cold temperatures. So I think I'm gonna end the video here. Um, I just don't wanna wait forever for this thing to, uh, to actually start going. Um, I guess I will end on this cables that are on the ground. It's really unfortunate, but and people think it's because of, you know, bad etiquette or whatever, but they actually don't, they don't stay. The notch right there is too worn. And, um, yeah, they don't stay anymore. So the best thing for them actually is to keep the, the nozzles pointed downward. Um, so I'm going to unplug. I'm glad this one does work. Yeah, this one doesn't stay either, so I'll just leave it like this. I can tell that the cable actually warmed up a little bit because it's actually a little more flexible. So, all right. Well, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Remember, preheat your battery as much as possible.